Good morning. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, and turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 29. Ezekiel chapter 29, in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Incidentally, it's six o'clock in the morning by me. I'm still, I had just finished uh, some wonderful devotional time and study in the scriptures with our Lord. Got, got quite a few things going on, um, Lord willing. <laughs> The time will be there to uh, bring these out, but <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 7. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, in the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh king of Egypt, and prophesy against him, and against all Egypt. Now you have to remember, okay, <clears throat> for our instruction in righteousness, okay, remember Romans 15 verse 4, all things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope, okay? When we today, the Church of the Living God, within this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, Read within the Old Testament. Egypt and Pharaoh, you can liken onto Egypt being a type of this present world. And Pharaoh, in type, can be likened onto Lucifer, that old devil, serpent. Okay? Keep that in mind. Okay? <clears throat> Verse 2 again, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh king of Egypt, Satan, and prophesy against him and all Egypt, the world. Prophesy. For us today in this dispensation, remember, prophesying is both foretelling of future events and two, speaking the word of the Lord through the scriptures, as guided by the Holy Ghost. You know, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit. You know this already, okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the Pharaoh king of Egypt. Now stop right there. Our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, is against Satan, obviously. Hello. Okay? Let's read. The great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. Okay? My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. Okay? Isaiah? Oh, you know where we're going. Well, you got to remember this. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to 15 again. You, you need to keep this in mind, brother, sister. Ezekiel 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Look around you. Hath not the devil done so? Hmm. Any of you outside my na nation here of, uh, in America, you tell me. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will Exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation 
in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Back in Ezekiel, verse 3 again. Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Satan, the little g-god of this world. The great dragon that lieth in the midst of thy rivers. The great dragon. Tying the great dragon with Egypt. Our instruction in righteousness, remember? Okay. <clears throat> The great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own, I will be like the Most High, okay? And I have made it for myself. Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter, oh, Revelation chapter 12. Dragon, a great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, huh? Okay? Revelation chapter 12. Verse 9. <clears throat> uh, let's read verses 7 on to verse 9. Okay? Excuse me. Revelation 12, verses 7 on to verse 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was... Their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, the devil, and Satan, <clears throat> which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay? That old dragon? Oh, no, excuse me. Beg your pardon. <laughs> that old serpent. <clears throat> That old serpent. Back to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. One verse. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 13. And you can go ahead and read this whole chapter on your own time, okay? Thou hast been in Eden the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes. <sighs> pipes is a wind instrument, okay? Was prepared in thee, in the day that thou was created, and of course, let's go there very quickly, Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, one verse, okay, showing this to you, because you need to remember this, Genesis 3 verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Questioning what God has said. Okay. And very quickly, this is going to play, uh, come into play here pretty soon. Back in Ezekiel chapter 28, Verse 17. Now remember in verse 13, the anointed cherub, Satan, serpent, the devil, Satan, okay? Verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, taken with himself. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. All the Shiny, glittering stones, right? 
I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Go back now to Ezekiel chapter 12. Oh, excuse me. Go forward now to Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 4. But I will put hooks in thy jaws and will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick unto thy scales. And I will bring thee up out of the midst of the rivers. And all the fish of thy rivers shall stick unto thy scales. Okay? I, I, I need my bookmarker for this. <clears throat> Go to Job. Go to Job. Chapter 41. We're going to read this whole chapter. Job chapter 41. Can you handle that? You too busy? Job chapter 41. Beginning at verse 1. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook? Or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? What are you... Personally, brother, sister, what are you personally going to do to the devil? What are you personally going to do to the devil? Canst thou put an hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou take him for a servant forever? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird? You playing games with the devil, boy? Or wilt thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall, thy compa shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons, or his head with fish spears? Lay thy hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Remember how our Lord Jesus Christ says to abide in him? For without him... You can do nothing. You remember that? About abiding in Christ? Because apart from him, without him, you can't do anything. <clears throat> Lay thy hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain to overthrow God. All these false heretics, these false brethren, these fakes, these infiltrators, coadjutors, the heathen heretics that they are. Hmm. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? <clears throat> None is so fierce that, durst, that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Now get, a, get the gravity of that verse. Okay, get the gravity of that verse. None is so fierce that dare stir him up. For without me, you can do nothing, our Lord Jesus Christ said. Okay? It is, the battle is the Lord's. Okay? Who then is able to stand before me? We are to resist the devil, and he will flee from us. Yes, because we look unto the Lord. 
but you in your own power? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, tough guy? Huh? <clears throat> Who then is able to stand before me? And remember, Satan is a created being. Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. Are you, the pot chair, going to contend with the potter? Why hast thou made me thus? Thou fool. Who are you to contend? with the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. What, is the way of the world on your shoulders? Or as the hymn saith, he's got the whole world in his hand. Verse 12, I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment, or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. Oh, and look at all these heretics here on YouTube. They gnash with their teeth. Their teeth, <laughs> their teeth are terrible round about. It says his teeth are terrible round about. They are of the devil. Gnashing with their teeth. <clears throat> his scales are his pride. Shut up together as with a close seal. His scales are his pride. Okay? Uh, go back to Ezekiel chapter 29. Let's refresh our memory. Ezekiel chapter 29, verse 4. But I will put hooks in thy jaws. Hello? Are you following? You better be following me along. Okay? I will put hooks in thy jaws. I will cause the fish of thy rivers to stick unto thy scales. And I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers. And all the fish of thy rivers shall stick unto thy scales. Verse 15 in Job 41. His scales are his pride. Shut up together as with a close seal. See, they all gravitate back to one another from whence they came out of Egypt, led by Pharaoh Satan to infiltrate, to gnash with their teeth, to cause division, to cause strife amongst brethren. His scales are his pride. Satan has pride in his ministers of righteousness. Oh, oh don't worry. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at that. We're going to get there. Okay? And isn't it interesting that they are all gravitating together? Together as with a close seal? One is so near to another that no air can come between them. God breathed the breath of God. The scriptures are given by inspiration. God breathed. Okay? One is so near to another that no air can come between them. Brethren, when is that line crossed? I'm going to link that video in this one. Okay? They are being made manifest. What does it say here? <clears throat> Verse 12. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. If you're out of the Church of the Living God, 
and have not seen, when our Lord hath made manifest the infiltrators, the coadjutors, and you're ignoring it and going onto the side of Egypt, the world, and under Pharaoh, Satan? Is there something wrong with you? Are you of us? Verse 17. They are joined one to another. They stick together. They cannot be sundered. These people on YouTube. And I'm not going to name you. Because that's what you want. But y'all, the Church of the Living God, know to, on to whom I'm referring. They are joined one to another. They stick together. They cannot be sundered. They're provincial. Can send them on little missions to infiltrate. But once the Lord reveals them onto us, they just go back one to another into that same little grouping. They are joined one to another. They stick together. They cannot be sundered. Where is that? <clears throat> His scales are as pride shut up together with as with a closed seal. There, one is so near to another that no air can come between them. Brethren, for those who are babes, for those who have recently just come on to our Lord Jesus Christ by grace through faith, by repentance, okay? There is hope for those, the babe in Christ. But these infiltrators, these devils, they are so close together, no air can come between them. They have passed that point of no return. They are here to do a mission. To do as much damage as they can unto the church of the living God and unto his word, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. And what are you personally going to do about it? Is the weight of the world on your Shoulders, or is the whole world in the hand of the Lord? You know this. You know this. Let's continue. By his kneesings, a light doth shine. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils goeth smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame go out of his mouth. Doth not all the words and perverse twisting of bib excuse me, of scriptural doctrines, doth not their word that go forth out of their mouth burn? Seeking to cast fire and burn the truth of the scriptures. Hmm? And while we are here, brethren, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 11, you know where we're going. You go there, go there, don't make me say it twice. Go there, okay? Verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. 
Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers be also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And guess what the end is, according to their works. After we, the church of the living God, are resurrected, caught up, these doctrines of devils that these devils are preaching on to these people, it's going to make them to take the mark of the beast. To damn them to hell. They, they want to remove prayer from salvation. Scriptural repentance, brokenness, contrition, sorrow. Coming to the Lord broken. Believing on him for what he has done for you. And then humbling yourself before the Lord and the weaker calling on the name of the greater. And they say, works, works. When they themselves, yes, every single one of you, easy believers and heretics, you are actually the ones preaching works salvation. Because you are saved by your belief. But see, the ignorance of God's word is your strong point. And those who will who do not receive the love of the truth, may you have them. But those who truly want to be saved, who truly love our Lord, Verse 12 in Job 41, I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. <clears throat> Verse 22 in Job 41, In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. Stiff-necked, Reveling in your sin, believing this ferocious heresy that the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't judge you. That you're not supposed to judge fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Where these people ought to be in godly sorrow, these heretics seek to turn that into joy, don't they? They joy in their sin and they have no shame nor fear of the Lord. His fla the flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. Hey, there ain't nothing that we are going to preach that are going to get these heretics to turn from their ways. The Lord could do that. Yes, he could. But those who have made their choice and doing the work of their father, the devil, they have gone past that point. They are joined together. They are the scales of his pride. With them, brethren, you rebuke their doctrines through the scriptures. But as far as them, only a miracle could ever bring one of these heretics unto true salvation. It is possible. Yes, even we, the Church of the Living God, have to acknowledge that it is possible. Is it likely? No. 
Is it possible? With God, all things are possible, yes. Is it probably going to happen? The fools that are in Canada? The fool uh, uh, out in the Northeast? The fool from down under? Hmm? His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. Hard-hearted? They have made their choice? When he raiseth, riseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. Are you afraid of these people? By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. See, when people who we thought were of us and break off and are joined together as the scales of his pride? Is that when you examine yourself and seek to purify, to be purified even more so? The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold. The spear, the dart, or the habergen. He esteemeth iron as straw and brass as rotten wood. Note that iron and brass can withstand fire. Straw and rotten wood get burnt up. Hold your place here. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12, under verse 15. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, and verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, okay? Gold, silver, precious stones can abide the fire. Wood, hay, and stubble get burnt up. Check out uh, Brother uh, Matthew Landau's videos on wood, hay, and stubble, okay? Very good, okay? Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet, as, yet so as by fire. And that's not talking about purgatory. That's talking about our rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Go back now to Job. Okay? He esteemeth iron as straw and brass as rotten wood. Your rewards at the judgment seat uh, of Christ that will abide the fire that you will be rewarded for. Millennial inheritance and stuff like that, okay? These guys try to turn iron into straw and brass into rotten wood. They try to make that that abides into something that abideth not. Do you get it? Do you get it? The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. See, this is the futility of fighting back with these people. Their doctrines is something else. But when you start fighting fire with fire, what's going to win? When they attack you personally, to, uh, what, what, what did they say? The annoying uh, voice, the creepy smile, right? They attack your 
facial features because they can't attack the scriptures, even though that's what they do attack. They try to turn iron into straw and brass into rotten wood. But see, when the Lord speaks against them through the scriptures, all they can do, and all they do, is attack the outside, the messenger. Hmm. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of his spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. How many people are following the doctrines of devils right now, brethren? One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his light who is made without fear. They have no fear of God. Hello. He beholdeth all things. He is king over all the children of pride. And every single one of you easy believism heretics. You are a child of pride, child of disobedience, children of wrath. He beholdeth all high things. He sees, he sees the high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Go back now to Ezekiel chapter 29. Verses 5 on to verse 7 now. And I will leave thee thrown into the wilderness, thee and all the fish of thy rivers. Thou shalt fall upon the open fields. Thou shalt not be brought together nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beasts of the field and to the fowls of the heaven making reference to the devastated army at Armageddon. And all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord. All the world is going to know that Jesus Christ is the Lord. God our Father. And all the inhabitants of Egypt shall know that I am the Lord, because they have been a staff of reed to the house of Israel. When they took hold of thee by thy hand, thou didst break, and rend all their shoulder. And when they leaned upon thee, thou breakest, and madest all their loins to be at a stand. If you are of the church of the living God, what in the wide world of sports entertainment are you doing going back onto the world? Hmm? Hmm? Isaiah chapter 31 Isaiah chapter 31 Isaiah 31 we're going to read this whole chapter can you handle it woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trusting chariots because they are many and in horsemen, because they are very strong, but they look not to the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. He, yet he also is wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words. But will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Hello, are you, are you getting this? Now the Egyptians, people of the world, are men, and not, capital G, God. And their horses are, and their horses' flesh, 
and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that hope helpeth, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down, and they all shall fail together. See, the thing about you easy believism heretics, those of you who have made your choice and knowingly are serving Satan, you know that your devices are going to come to naught. And to you pathetic, grotesque, disgusting heretics, your joy will be that you will bring as many people as you can down to hell with you. Your damnation is just. And while I do not wish people to go to hell, I'm not going to, it's going to bring a tear to my glass eye to know because of what you have done against the Lord. And how you have perverted the truth. You're going to get what's coming to you. God is a God of recompense. Remember brethren. For thus hath the Lord spoken unto me. Like as the lion and the young lion roaring on his prey. When a multitude of shepherds is called forth against him. He will not be afraid of their voice nor abase himself for the noise of them. So shall the Lord of hosts come down to fight for Mount Zion and for the hill thereof. As birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also he will deliver it, and passing over he will preserve it. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For our instruction in righteousness, those of you who are still unsure about this heretical, easy believism doctrine, heretical, satanic, of the Vatican, because it's making you trust in what you do, not what our Lord has done for you. Hmm. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. For in that day every man shall cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for sin. What is your little pet doctrine that you refuse to give unto the Lord and be corrected? the scriptures. Then shall the Assyrian fall with the sword, not of a mighty man, and the sword, not of a mean man, shall devour him, but he shall flee from the sword, and his young men shall be discomforted. And he shall pass over to his stronghold for fear, and his princes shall be afraid of the ensigns, saith the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, and his furnace in Jerusalem. Where our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is going to rule and reign from in the Millennial Kingdom. When he come back with us, the Church of the Living God, his body, his bride. Ezekiel, chapter 30. Ezekiel chapter 30, verses 13 on to verse 22. Brethren, thus saith the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols. Uh, thus saith the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols. And I will cause their images to cease out of Noph, 
and there shall be no more a prince of the land of Egypt. When Satan is bound for a thousand years, and I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. All the world is going to fear the Lord. And I will make Pathros desolate, and I will set fire in Zoan, and will execute judgments in No. And I will pure, pour my fury upon... I, I like this verse. I, I, I like this verse. Get a load of this. For our instruction in righteousness, get a load of this. And I will pour my fury upon sin. The strength of Egypt. And I will cut off the multitude of no. Referencing places in Egypt, yes. Our instruction in righteousness, brethren. And I will pour my fury upon sin, the strength of Egypt. What is the strength of this world? What is the strength? Of Satan, I will be like the Most High. He shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Pride. He's a king over all the children of pride. <clears throat> I, I, I just love that verse for that. I just love that. I just left that verse for that. <laughs> Very telling. And I will set fire in Egypt. Sin shall have great pain. And no shall be rent asunder. And no shall have distress daily. We will be comforted. And they going to weep. The young men of Aven and of Pibasheth shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into captivity. At Tephanes also the day shall be darkened, when I shall break there the yokes of Egypt, and the pomp of her strength shall cease in her. As for her, a cloud shall cover her, and her daughter shall go into captivity. Thus will I execute judgments in Egypt, and they shall know that I am the Lord. You're not saved. You're going to be left behind and go into the time of Jacob's trouble. A time of devastation upon this earth that has never been seen before. What are you doing listening to these heretics? Do you not know that your pride is going to be your ruin? But are you then again, he is, a, he is a king over all the children of pride. His scales are so close together that no air can get between them. Yeah. And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month, in the seventh day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He has broken the arm of Satan, the little G God of this world. And lo, it shall not be bound up to be healed, to put a roller to bind it, to make it strong to hold the sword. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt. I will break his arms, the strong, and that which was broken, and I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. Alas, the inevitable end of every single one of you easy believism heretics that are damning people to hell. And brethren,
These people who are teaching this stuff have made their choice. From the table of filth to the slave of Beelzebub of Blackpool to everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit. Hmm. To the one who believes himself to the absurd provincial Their damnation is just. And it is not you personally, brother. It is of the Lord. Because without the Lord Jesus Christ, we could do nothing. Don't forget that. The weight of the world is not on your shoulders. We have a burden. Absolutely. Don't forget, it is a it is of the Lord. It is of the Lord because without Him, we can do nothing. Okay. Please don't forget that. That's going to be it for this video. Got another one coming. Got several coming within these next couple of days, like I have mentioned. Um, a sister kind of, in a way, asked me to look into the Trump of God. And also a dearly beloved brother has um, also given me something uh, else, uh, you know, shared with me some things that I'm going to be coming out with here, uh, Lord willing, in his time. But I just wanted to bring this stuff to your attention again, brethren. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. And don't forget these things. Okay? Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I love you. We will see you in the next video.